Again, I'm talking to journalist Emily Atkin from the climate section of Think Progress, Climate Progress. You can find it at thinkprogress.org. You can find her on Twitter at M or We. I want to move on to another story. This is actually a really in-depth investigative piece that you did a couple weeks ago um, about a jury in Texas. Uh, They awarded a, a big... Uh, a big reward for a family that was sickened by fracking. Uh, and, and it looks like that the the company and some of justice may actually not be served. Um, I guess let's start at the beginning. Tell us about the family and what actually happened at this uh, to this family in Texas. Sure. Um, so there was a family, Bob and Lisa Parr, and their daughter, Emma, that live on the Barnett Shale uh, in Texas, which is one of the more high-producing natural gas shales in Texas. Now, as you may know, there's a lot of fracking in Texas, and they happen to live in an area where uh, they're very close to a lot of rigs, uh, one specifically. And uh, so after uh, after Bob married Lisa and they moved into the home there, uh, they started getting sick. And it's not your general kind of sick. You know, it wasn't colds or flus. It, it was you know, nosebleeds and dizziness and, like, vomiting, you know, things that are really scary. Um, And they didn't know what was happening to them. And uh, so, long story short, uh, they deciphered via, uh, you know, neighbors' accounts and all that that it was because of something in the environment. Uh, That's at least what their doctor told them, too. And they found that their symptoms corresponded with leaks that were happening at a nearby fracking well, uh, leaks of natural gas, to be specific. Um, So they sued the company, which is Aruba Petroleum, and they won, which was crazy, uh, the fact that they won, because that just never happened before. Usually, if there's a health complaint uh, in a lawsuit against a company, either it gets dismissed or uh, a confidential settlement winds up being reached. In this case, it got taken all the way to the a jury, and uh, we're pretty sure it's the first time that a jury has ever ruled in favor of plaintiffs against a fracking company for being the cause of their health problems. The jury specifically found that the uh, fracking company Aruba had created an intentional nuisance uh, for the family. So the jury awarded them $3 million, and it was a huge deal. I mean, I remember writing the initial article about the jury verdict, and it went it went crazy. People were really happy about it. Um, but then I started talking to uh, one of our legal people here at the Center for American Progress, and he was just like, I don't really think that this is going to this is going to play out. I don't think they're ever going to get that money. So why why is that exactly? Other than the fact that it that it's that it's Texas, is it really just that it's? That it's I mean, like, is it just because the, the answer Texas? Moving on. Uh. It's kind of, you know, it's like that, that's kind of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you want to save like a, like a twenty minute conversation, it's because it's Texas. But I mean, there's... no, actually, let's let's go into detail here. Yeah. <laughs> so basically. Um, this happened in uh, kind of like a lower trial court, right? So there are obviously mm-hmm. appeals that need to be made. Um, and, well, they don't need to be made, but that's what's going to happen. Uh, Aruba sure. has already started filing uh, their appeal, and that will go up to a higher court. And then no matter what happens in that next court, um, whoever loses will appeal to the Texas Supreme Court. So this case is definitely going to the Texas Supreme Court. Because it's big. It's a big case. Uh, eventually, it's going to go there. And when it does go there, um, the Pars have the least likely chance of winning than they do in any court in the United States. Um, and that's just because of the history that we have with the Texas Supreme Court. In that court, there is an 85% success rate for corporate defendants uh, over plaintiffs. So that's basically the... that That's even bigger than Alabama. In Alabama, they have a better chance of, of winning their case. Um, wow. And that's also because, that's basically because in Texas, they elect their Supreme Court judges, and Texas is Texas. And that's, <laughs> that's it. 
Well, let's so let's talk a little bit because you actually you, you go into a little bit of detail about where some of the money goes into uh, these judicial elections and how wh- where the money's coming from and and you know again the, like you said eighty five percent of corporate uh, cases they side with the corporation over over. You know, well, I guess I guess corporations are people now, so I guess mm-hmm. corporate people over the normal people, I suppose. Uh, but talk a little bit about some of the money and where it's coming from and how how it's going to get these these uh, these corporate judges elected. Right. Well, so your large interests in Texas, obviously, are the energy industry and uh, yeah. and the fracking industry and uh, groups that want to get Republican politicians elected, which generally support those industries. So that's where most of the money is coming from. Um, I think if you can read from the article from where I said, I I actually don't have the names in front of me right now, but you have uh, really large Republican donors to these elections, and uh, the result winds up being that the judges that they elect, you know, they often take the popular position of that, uh, of those interests. And unfortunately, the judicial system is supposed to, you know, defend the law regardless of, po- of popularity of the position. You know, defending the law requires taking unpopular positions sometimes. And that's just, if you take unpopular positions as a judge of the Texas Supreme Court, you know, you have you only have a few terms before you're out again. Your job depends on taking the position of your donor. And there's a lot of money uh, that's going into these elections uh, on both sides, on both Democratic and Republican side, but more so on the Republican side. Yeah, it really just, it's like, you know, I think overall, I think most kind of progressives would agree that our broader judicial system is unbelievably broken and, and, you know, racist with the war on drugs. And, you know, we could go on for a long, long time. But, uh, but like the fact that millions of dollars are spent in judicial elections is just, uh, it's almost like, it's like the, they're not even trying, right? It just seems like it's like, it's so corrupt. It's so blatantly <laughs> corrupt, right? It's like, we don't even like have the, uh, the image of, and the, and we can't even pretend that justice is blind here, right? There's like, even though it's, it's not. And, you know, if we look, if you really look at the system, it's not, but at least, it, it, there's not even like a, a, a veneer of blindness here. It's just like, well, no, these people are getting lots of money and that's just how they're going to rule. And according to at least uh, a couple of, uh, Texas law professors I spoke to, it's just getting worse uh, in that state particularly. Um, Texas is just apparently getting more and more conservative, more and more Tea Party influence, and uh, it's not looking good for the PARs, and the PARs know that. Um, the family knows that. Uh, yeah. When I spoke with the uh, with their attorneys, they basically said that even from, from the moment they filed this case, they told the family that, you know, even if we win... Even if we win in the trial courts, you know, this is, this might, you might lose in the end. You're very likely to lose in the end. Uh, and yeah. it's sad. 